Watering the garden by hand may be very therapeutic, but unless you happen to be seriously methodical, it can actually be a very inefficient way of getting water to your plants. And you could quite unintentionally be wasting one of our most finite and valuable resources, water. There's no doubt there are times when hand watering is best, but if you want to do the right thing all round for your garden and save water, then you want to consider installing an efficient watering system. I'm not talking about the spluttering, misting polypipe systems of old. The new approach is very high tech and involves pipeline with embedded drippers that deliver a set amount of water per hour over its entire length. It's dead easy stuff to install. All you need is a range of polypipes and drip line to suit your needs, and then the fittings to match all your pipe sizes. I'll also be adding a simple programmable computerized timer, and one of these doohickeys, a vacuum breaker. More on that later. It's really like working with wet Meccano, great fun. Now first things first, you need to work out how much water the tap you want to connect to can deliver. And go! Just put a 10 litre bucket under the tap and time how long it takes to fill with the tap open a normal sort of amount. This one took 30 seconds, so some basic maths. 60 seconds divided by my seconds, so that's two, multiplied by 10 litres, tells me this tap gives me 20 litres a minute, or 1200 litres an hour. Now, your drip line. Look at the label on the line. That'll tell you the volume of water it puts out and the spacing of the drippers. This one is 1.6 litres an hour per dripper, and the drippers are every 30 centimetres. That means that every metre of this drip line will put out around 5.3 litres of water an hour. So that means that my tap can comfortably supply water to over 200 metres of this drip line. So one zone can't be any bigger than 200 metres in its actual pipe run. You got it? <laughs> Don't worry, this is the only hard part. Laying your drip line couldn't be easier. Clear back your mulch and lay down your drip line where you want water. Use the black poly pipe to join the gaps. Now I like to keep things nice and neat. So where the pipe comes out of the bed, I like to conceal it where possible. This can also save on joiners and elbows instead of going up and over the top. Keeping your pipe tucked away also helps to prevent damage. And just a tip, so you can find all your bits as you need them, put them in separate plastic pots in a basket or a box to carry around with you. It's important that your system doesn't leak anywhere that it's not supposed to, so you need to add these ratchet clips to every join, and you will find it's much easier to use pliers rather than fingers. The idea with your drip line is to come in reasonably close to your plants. Don't put it up against the edge of a bed. Just make your way around all your beds, keeping your total length in mind based on the output of your tap. As you install, it's important that you don't create any dead ends of pipe. Think loops instead. Keep your system in one big loop, even if that means having smaller loops hanging off the main loop and a parallel length of plain poly pipe running all the way back to a T-junction at the start of the system. This lets the entire system charge up with reasonably equal pressure so your drippers deliver the right amount of water. To hold your pipe in place, you may want to use pipe pegs. If I have plants in a small space that need a concentration of water, I also add adjustable drippers to my system. These are perfect for big pots too. At the lowest or furthermost point of the line, I like to install an inline tap. This lets you flush the system out when you first start it up, and then again every few months just to keep it clear. Time to connect to the tap. Remember this? It's a must add. It's a simple backflow prevention device and it stops water from your system getting into your plumbing if there's a pressure drop in your mains water. Just attach it between your tap and your timer. Now turn your system on. Open that inline tap to clear any muck out. Just let it run for a few minutes before shutting it off. Then check the system is running properly. Look for any obvious leaks. Program your timer, and that's it. But do make sure you adjust your timer every now and then to suit the seasons. And don't forget to check the battery.